I'm Josephine Van Leer of Jones Chase Lawyers, and I wanted to jump online and talk about redundancy whilst on maternity and parental leave in light of the protection from redundancy bill. I thought I would look at the numbers, the human experience, the current law and the changes to make the law more equitable. The uptake on shared parental leave is just at around 2%. So redundancy whilst on some form of leave to care for newborn children is by and large a women's issue. In 2020 alone, 52,000 women were made redundant whilst on maternity leave. Everyone experiences maternity leave differently. And having had two periods of maternity leave myself, it's a time when you feel all of the feels. You're desperate for a break from work because of the physical demands of the pregnancy, but you're suddenly untethered from a structure to your day, which for me, I'd operated under for 20 years. You're plunged into a crazy new world, which is very foreign to you. Some women experience postnatal depression. We nearly all experience sleep deprivation. And of course, at the same time, you're overjoyed and wrapped up in the love for your new baby. So to be told that you're at risk of redundancy at this time is extremely destabilizing, as life, when you, as you know it, has been turned upside down. So what is the law? Of course, it's lawful to make a woman redundant during maternity leave, but it's subject to the requirements of Regulation 10 of the Maternity and Parental Leave Regulations 1999. This applies during an employee's maternity leave or any period of shared parental or adoption leave where it is not practicable for the employer to return the person to their role because of redundancy, they must be offered re-employment where it is suitable. If an employer does not do this, then the dismissal for redundancy will be automatically unfair. So this is a piece of protective legislation that prioritizes women and parents on leave over others at risk in securing ongoing employment within the organization. It's an equitable rather than an equal policy. But as practitioners, we have found that this legislation does not close the equity gap enough. First, it does not cover women who are pregnant and yet to go on leave. Second, once a woman has returned from maternity leave, she has very little protection at all and no priority for re-employment upon her return. As an employment lawyer, I would say that this is the typical case that I get where a woman has had her maternity leave, she returns, and this is when it starts to go wrong. And she really has to struggle or fight to get back to where she was. That seems to manifest in things like key clients having been handed over who aren't returned, direct reports have gone over to another member of staff for management, or other key parts of their role have been divided up amongst peers and those functions have not been passed back yet for whatever reason. Now, if you've been divested of important functions, direct reports and key, key clients, even the best intentioned employer who devises a fair selection criteria that measures a range of facets across the business in a redundancy exercise. For the woman who's returned from maternity leave, she will often find that she falls short as compared with other staff who have not had leave because their role hasn't been eroded in this subtle way. Women in this position who go on to be made redundant are left with arguing complicated cases for indirect sex discrimination. This is an ambulance way down the cliff. What she really needed was for it to be recognized at the outset of the process that she is in a more vulnerable position when it comes to redundancy because she has had an extensive period of time out of the business. So this is where the protection from redundancy bill seeks to make things more equitable in redundancy processes. The bill means that women are prioritized for re-employment into suitable alternative roles from the date they notify their employer of their pregnancy and for a period up to six months after they return from maternity leave. This crucially means that they are slightly more protected than they otherwise have been, enabling a bit more time to get their feet back under the desk before they will be required to competitively compete for the few remaining opportunities. Do you think it's equitable enough? Feel free to post your opinions below. We'd be interested to hear. Please note that this is for general information only and is not intended to be legal advice. If you need legal advice, then please don't hesitate to reach out.